Thank you, Mr. Baker, and thank you for the testimony from all four uh, witnesses. Um, the reason we're holding this hearing is that this, the Affordable Care Act cut, slashed more than $300 billion out of Medicare Advantage that so many of our seniors rely upon. Uh, the cuts were delayed through various actions. That's what Mr. Baker's testimony is all about, but didn't happen. I agree. It didn't happen because the cuts were delayed. Now they're becoming real, and there's no way it won't have some impact on seniors. The hearing today is to figure out what it, will that impact be. Mr. Book, uh, as you describe in your testimony, the cuts to Medicare Advantage are becoming real for millions of seniors. Now, there is no magic bean here. These cuts will land on them. Some suggest, and, and your testimony said that there, you would be forced to spend $3,700 less per senior as a, a result of these cuts. Some suggest these simply eliminate inflated profits for Medicare Advantage plans and, or have made them uh, more efficient. But as we all know, CMS requires MA plans to bid on Medicare's guaranteed benefits, A, B, D, as well as administrative costs, expected price. So this is all part of the bid. So question to you is what, what is the real impact on our seniors? as results of the cuts that really begin next year for Medicare Advantage? And so the, um, that, that $3,700 per, per senior per month or per enrolled member is going to have to be made up for by uh, either, either reductions in benefits, increased copays, increased premiums. That's, uh, that, that's really all there is. They can reduce restrict provider networks so there are few, fewer physicians seniors can see. Those are about all the options they have. You mentioned profit. The average uh, health care company makes a profit of about 3 to 5 percent on all of their business, including their commercial and private sector business, and the, uh, these cuts are 27 percent. So there's, a, there's no way they can make up these cuts just by reducing their profit. Even if they were willing to run profit down to zero, there's simply not enough room. They're going to have to make significant very significant cuts in the uh, benefits they provide to seniors or increase their costs, increase their prices that right. seniors pay above what we have to reduce the benefits. Right. Or you have to increase the cost to right. seniors. Right. There, there's no other room. Deductibles. Yeah. That's correct. You don't have a magic bean that you'll be using. Uh, uh, perhaps one of the physicians here could me mention a magic bean, but I think if we had that, we would have used that already. Yeah, I would think so. Mr. Wing, Dr. Burnish, let's talk about what we know has already happened. Um, I was around the last time Congress went after Medicare private plans in the 1997 Balanced uh, Budget Act. According to CBO estimates, at the time that law took $97 billion out of the plans. This is three times greater than that. But I was there when almost 2.5 million seniors lost their plans, some of them in our communities. I remember taking the calls. I remember trying to figure out how we were going to get them in other plans. I remember how upset they were they liked what they had. Um, and there was an uproar. So much so, Congress uh, intervened in 2003 and created new incentives to Medicare Advantage plans, resulting in the successful program we ha have today. Now, uh, with the $300 billion in cuts, it feels like, as Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again. Aren't we likely to see similar levels of upset seniors once they start to feel the pain of these cuts? Mr. Wing, Dr. Burnage? Um, I think the answer is yes. I can't speak for the industry, but we submitted our bid for 2015 uh, in the first week of June, and there will be uh, withdrawals from markets. There will be withdrawals of products from certain markets. Withdrawals from markets means there will leave. be fewer Medicare Advantage plans offered to fewer seniors. I can't speak for the total industry, but I know there are, there's one geography where SCAN will be leaving in 2015 entirely. There's probably four or five counties where we're withdrawing some of our special need products, and in virtually all of our markets, we will be increasing what we ask seniors to pay, especially on the Part D, um, the RX benefits. Sure. There will also be a slight trimming of the networks, both in Arizona and California. You'll be able to see fewer doctors, fewer hospitals, less choice. Yes. Yeah. And those, that impact would not be occurring without these Affordable Care Act cuts? You know, we're a not-for-profit, but we need to have a, a margin. 
And right now in, in 2014, we have a negative margin. So we love caring for seniors. Negative margin means your profits are so large you're actually losing money? We're losing money. Yeah. Dr. Burns. So Bubba 1997, I lived through it. I practiced it uh, uh, in Ohio. It was not pleasant. It was painful uh, for uh, those that we cared for. Uh, it left a bad taste in the physician's mouth. Um, I think you have to have choice. Narrow networks takes away choice, but it also takes away quality physicians. Uh, and I'm here as a physician. I'm not here as a health plan. And I think it's important to offer choice and a broader network so there's a broad uh, palette of uh, services. Um, the programs like AIM would never get off the ground. And when you look at the expenditures in Medicare, 28 percent of all CMS dollars are spent in the last year of life, and half of that's in the last month. So the plan that targets the most uh, sick and chronically ill seniors would not have gotten off the ground? No. And it won't be sustainable either. And then the last uh, piece I'd say is uh, physicians have to manage overhead. And at some point that those pass cuts down to them through the health plans is they'll just disengage. And even the plans that do exist in counties, they won't be in them. They'll go back to fee for volume. And if you recall, after BBA 97, if you looked at the uh, rate of increase of expenditures, they, they plateaued a little bit after 97, and then they went up much faster than they did in the previous 10 years. I think the same thing could happen occur if you do that now. You think the impact on seniors will be the same or greater uh, than the cuts in the balanced budget agreement? I don't know, but I know that uh, physicians will figure out how to cover their overhead by doing more things. Doing more things, seeking revenue other sources? Uh, they'll they'll do more testing. They'll do more invasive procedures. They'll 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 do what they did after 1997. Yeah, kind of finished with this. Um, I hate to say that, but I think no, I know. I look, no magic mean here. Um, care coordination, innovation within Medicare Advantage, I think, has been hugely helpful long term for our seniors. What's the impact of that when you're facing these cuts? Um, is that at risk? Well, I think the care coordination is very, very valuable for the population we serve is, our, is the dual eligibles, the seniors in our CSNPs, our seniors in our ISNPs. Every year, uh, we have to do an upfront assessment, an HRA, if you will. We have to develop a care management plan, a multidiscipline care management plan. And we love to do the special need plans, but they're underfunded. We need, <laughs> so they will be uniquely impacted with these cuts as opposed to a vanilla uh, MAPD program. So um, in the 20th century, uh, a physician could practice and manage 25 to 30 drugs and a dozen tests. And now uh, people are living longer, they're more complex, they're more complex drugs. You need a village of people to take care of people. So team-based care is a 21st century concept and it's evolving. Some people call it patient-centered medical home. I call it team-based care. Those teams are comprised of individuals such as care managers, nurse practitioners, sometimes uh, a pharmacist, social worker, uh, behavioral therapist, because these, these people that are living longer are having much more complex problems. And physicians by themselves, internists like myself, can't do it alone. And if they don't have those teams around them, the patients will go back to falling through the cracks like they have uh, in the past. And so I think the members of those teams, those budget cuts, will take those people right out of the program. Yeah. Well, here's my here, final point. Thank you for the testimony, all of you. I, you know, around here, if there's a my, if there's a three billion dollar cut to Medicare, the place goes crazy. We're ending Medicare as you know it. Three hundred billion dollar cut to seniors today. Some say, oh, it's no problem. Nothing's going to happen. There's going to be real impact. It's coming at us soon. I think seniors need to know what the impact is, and I think Congress needs to find a way. Uh, to try to avoid these serious cuts on our seniors. Dr. McDermott, your recognition.